Welcome to the Two Guys Garage. Today, we got a great show for you. We're gonna get out of the shop. We're gonna take you to a car show in California. That's right, it's all about National Car Collectors Appreciation Day, and I can appreciate that. And you'll appreciate all the chrome and polish and cool paint jobs and rides you're gonna see. That's right, it's gonna be an action-packed day of great rides, so stick around. Seats are nice. Yeah, mm. check out these new seats. Nice and comfy for the ride out to California. Get that just hey. me. Woo. All right, get my glasses. I got my glasses. You don't need your glasses. What do you mean? Uh, it's just me. I'll see you back in a couple of days. We'll see you guys out in California. Dude, it's two guys garage. Two, we go. You go, uh, I go. Sorry, we man, it's a one man gig other. this time. You're just going to have to stay here and uh, take care of the shop. I'm in anger management. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If we're going to have this kind of relationship, we're going to need some space. So yeah, if you don't mind, go. uh, get that door and uh, we'll see you guys out there. and you're gonna be the seventh and eighth space. All right, maybe here one set of tires, pretty amazing. We're here at K&N, Riverside, California, for Car Collector Appreciation Day. That's Car Collector, that's you, that's me, that's this guy right here, this guy. All these guys are bringing their rides in, piling in left and right, come with me, you're gonna check them out. a car show, you just want to see a bunch of cars sitting around. You want to get in, you want to talk to the owners, you know, you want to kind of see some of the stories about, you know, maybe where they found the car and how many years it took to kind of build it or maybe some of the sweat equity or some of the passion for why they love that particular car. This is a cool, this is an old, what, Super 7 Lotus? You the owner of this car? I am, yes. Hey, I'm Kevin. Hi, Kevin. I'm Bruce. How Good you doing? Good to meet you. Tell me a little bit about this car. This is actually my own personal car. It originally belonged to my dad, and he won the Pacific Division Championship with this car in 1964. Uh, after he won the championship, he turned around and he sold the car. He only owned this car for about a year. Now, about seven years ago, my son found it on the Internet, and it took about a year, but we finally talked him into selling it back to us. So how did you verify that this was your dad's car, and how many owners did it change hands through, and what was that process? Well, first of all, the, all of the numbers matched up on the car. But also, when my dad sold the car in 1965, he wrote a nine-page letter to the guy he sold it to, talking about all the races he'd been in. That letter stayed with the car through six different owners. I got the letter back along with the car, and we've just been having a blast with it ever since. It's a barely street-legal go-kart, weighs about 980 pounds, 1340cc uh, engine, 86 horsepower, but it'll get to 60 miles an hour in under six seconds. So it, it's just a, a really quick, fun little car to drive. Lineup of cool cars. Here's just a nice, clean 69 Chevelle. Mike and his three sons, father and son story, rebuilt this car about 15 years ago. Still in great shape, nice chromed out, small block Chevy. It's got another one sitting in the garage. Great way to spend some time with your kids. This is just one of the beautiful cars here today at the event. This is a 1950 Lincoln. You know, it's based off the old 1950 Merc. You see a lot of things like the dash and interior parts that look really familiar. It's because they're the same. You know, but Lincoln stretched it seven inches and created this beautiful masterpiece. This is Kevin McClellan. Hi, Kevin. From k Glad you could make it. He's hosting us today. Kevin, this is a really cool old flathead under here. Why don't you show us a little bit, you know, what you got buried underneath. Sure. What's unique about this is, you know, people, they associate oil and air filters. It's been around forever. This is an oil bath air filter, and basically it used oil to separate the dirt out of the airstream. It helped them filter back in the day, right? So you had this media here. It was basically hay or grass. It looks like old grass clipping. Exactly, yeah. right. So back in 69, Ken and Norm, that's where K&N came from, actually invented a, a reusable filter for their motorcycles. They'd have issues on the beach and stuff or out in the desert, and it would plug up their filters in a day. They'd have to stop riding and put a new filter on it. The little filter that could has evolved into what we have today. You don't have to throw them away every single time. Yeah, there's 250 million vehicles registered on the road today, and we have about 12 million filters out there on passenger cars and trucks, and it makes it where we're not putting 12 million filters in the, in the, the waste stream each year. 
and it's really good for the environment. And um, yeah, well, you know, it's also good for making power. Absolutely, the airflow gains. <laughs> absolutely, cool. Well, I'm really glad you guys are hosting. There's so many awesome cars. We really tried to get a good mix here for you, so you guys could look at some good stuff. And we appreciate you being here. Cool. Well, I'll give you this back. Thank and we'll you. Start checking them out. Don't go away. We got more from the Car Collector Appreciation Day right here at K and N. Welcome back. Now we're still sunny California, Riverside, K&N's facility. We've got a cool hot rod show today. Check out this 57 Ford, supercharged, built in 1957, restored over eight years, completed in 1994. Just one of the beautiful cars here today at the K&N event. This was kicked off by a SEMA organization. Now these guys have been working behind the scenes to take care of our industry, to take care of our passion. You guys got some movements to the government? We did. Uh, just recently we had Senate Resolution 154 passed by the U.S. Senate supporting the Car Collectors Appreciation Day. Yeah, so July 9th, the official day. This is just one of many events happening simultaneously across the country. Exactly. We couldn't be at all of them, but we're here today and this is a fun one. And Look you guys prevented Steve day. with a special award today? Thank you very much. I you're, appreciate you're it. You're very welcome. Today we gave him a copy of the official resolution uh, to hang in their offices uh, in appreciation for their commitment and their support of the industry. This is it, kids. On a hot, sunny day in California, this is probably the dopest ride here. 1965 Impala, rolling around on 22s. I love it. I don't know what color green it is. It's got style, baby. Nineteen sixty-six Datsun Nissan five twenty pickup truck. Now it's all about patience. Salvador saw this thing for twelve five. Kept trying to get it. Kept trying to get it. Saw it at the shows. Waited, waited. Picked it up for forty-five hundred. Dropped in a V two ten motor in it. Picked up about forty horse. Cool ride to go kicking around. Check it out, a 1938 Chrysler Royal, beautiful car. Roberto sat on this thing for 14 years with a loving wife till he could retire and find the time to restore it. It's been on the road for about two or three years. Beautiful car, beautiful. This is my favorite part on a hot summer day. It's all about the Thermador. Check it out, you put your dry ice in here, then you go for a cruise, the air comes in here, and you thought driving was the best spot? No, nah, baby. It's all about this cold air. And this seat right here. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. This tip is brought to you by AutoGeek.net. We are car care. Back here with Mike Phillips from AutoGeek. And normally we've made it pretty easy on them on these tips. But today, we are giving you a worst case scenario. This thing's trashed. You know if the guy's got a foam pad on the dash. That paint is looking horrible. So we're gonna go ahead and do our, our tape trick. So we'll tape one side off so you can see a before and after. What we're gonna use today is called the XMT line. XMT stands for Extreme Machine Technology. There's four different polishes, ranking from number one to four. Four is the most aggressive, number one is the least aggressive. So what you wanna do is you wanna match the polish to the condition of your paint. But a lot of people can get by just using the number two. It'll tackle most of the paint out there. And start with a least aggressive polish. That way you've got less to take out. If you see it's not doing the job, you can always go more, uh, more aggressive. Here's a couple tips. Always align your pad so it's centered up on the backing plate. And then you always want to make sure this is rotating when you're using it. So you want to take a black felt marker and just put a mark there on the back of your plate. And that'll make it easy for your eyes to see that it's rotating. Next thing you want to do is turn it on, spread the product out, and then start making overlapping passes like this. I'm going to change out pads. We're going to go to the blue, which is a, a softer pad. Get that done, we're going to turn down the speed. We're going to turn it down from five to four. So we got that, and then we're gonna put on this Pinnacle XMT Carnauba Wax. Put some on there. All right, about got that. Now let's that. go ahead and wipe it off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We just showed you how to apply everything by machine. Now I'll let us show you how to take the wax off by machine. Hold on to this. This guy's got tricks, okay. This is a microfiber wax removing bonnet. It's reversible, you can use both sides. We put on a clean foam pad, 
Gonna throw this on there. Won't you bump the speed up to the five setting? Show everybody how easy it is to take You're the hiding that one in hiding that one in your pocket there. That looks good. With Pinnacle XMT series, it's easy to get show car results. For more information on Pinnacle XMT, visit autogeek.net. Hey, welcome back. We're in K&N. This is Riverside, California. A beautiful event today. National Car Collector Appreciation Day. Now, this is Russ Baccarella. He's out teaching the next generation of hot rodders, automotive technicians. Absolutely. I teach a high school automotive class. And uh, what we do is, is we'll take a, you know, a kid from a, as low as the ninth grade level and we'll bring him up through a fundamentals class and all the way up to, a, uh, to an upper level if that's where they choose to be. We do various competitions for our elite kids, Hot Rodder of Tomorrow being one of them. And we are the uh, third year in a row we've won the competition, set the national record at 22 minutes and 34 uh, seconds. 22 minutes. Let me see you guys at home build your small block Chevy in 22 minutes. Absolutely. Now it's great. K&N's a sponsor with you guys, helping to educate, helping to bring in scholarships, you know, not only for the high school kids, but then you follow on through your program into UTI and other organizations. These are just some of the recipients of the K&N scholarship program. Now this is Heather, one of the winners. And you're a big car nut? I am. Yeah, and you're part of the program. You're going to school. You're learning a lot about cars. Yes, I'm actually going into my senior year. Cool. And uh, a big passion for the automotive, but you've also got some other dreams. Yes, I'm actually looking to go into politics. I see transportation as a big leading issue for the future, and I feel that by going into both, we can help the world be a better place. All right, well, very cool. Right here, the next generation of the Smarties. Cool little story on this 55 Chevy. Pat bought it when you were 15 years old in 1975. I was riding my bike through an alley in Brea and I found it in the backyard and offered the guy 150 bucks for it. And it's been with me ever since. It sat in my dad's garage uh, after high school for about 15 years. You know, I decided uh, I better do something with the car and. Uh, I like the clear uh, valve covers on there. Kind of a cool little trick feature. Watch your valves floating around in there. <laughs> so, start out with. 49 Chevrolet pickup right. truck, uh -huh, and I see you plugged it into the wall. You got right. some sort of hybrid going uh -huh, on here? Yeah, we made our own freezer, now it holds tons of ice cream and sorbet. Okay, so that's what the power cord's for. Uh -huh. This is great stuff, right in here in an orange peel. Mm -hmm. All our own yeah. recipes. This is right. what you need. A nice, hot day, and a car show. Get yourself one. Whoa, baby. Now, ever hate waiting in line to get into the car show? You can just make up your own roads with something like this. A little history lesson. This is right out of the Korean War, a 1951 M38 Jeep. It's got a Fireball V6 in it. The owner drives it every day. This is its other ride. This is for the Home Depot run. You got a Dodge 1945, 6x6. Go anywhere, do anything. Take all your friends at one time. Go to the party, you name it. Now, what kind of guy would own some crazy old stuff like this? The same guy who owns this 2001 Porsche. Carbon fiber, limited edition, super fast. I tell you, these people around here are crazy. Don't turn that dial. There are cool cars waiting for you when we get back. you go to do brake jobs, one thing that gets people confused is edge codes. Now you typically will find them on the edge of the pad. Now here we have one here, it's three letters, three numbers, and then two more letters. Now it doesn't have to be on the edge of the pad. On this guy here, it's on the backing plate. This is an SST, this is a Wagner pad. You know it's made by a quality manufacturer. So if you don't see the codes, walk away. Now the second is the formulation. So you know exactly that this thing has been tested, it's meet all the standards, and the last two are actually the coefficient of friction. You got cold and hot, because when you first grab the brakes, you know, your pad's gonna be one temperature, but after you've absorbed all that energy from braking, you're gonna have another temperature, and your friction's gonna change. So this identifies both. And this is an EE, so it's got a cold and a hot. All right, now you're typically gonna fall in the range here, EE, FE, and FF. That's pretty much your passenger car range. When you get down to the GGs and HHs, those are pretty hardcore race pads. You're not gonna see those typically. So make sure you got at least your OE coefficient of friction, or maybe better, and that'll keep you running strong and safe down the road. This tip is brought to you by Wagner Brake. 
and the fine folks at Federated. I'm really digging this Car Collector Appreciation Day and I'm loving this ride. It's actually Dave McClellan's personal vehicle, 1955 Chevrolet. It's beautiful. All the original interior, except for maybe that big block. Lovely, lovely car. And over here we've got, you know, someone's interpretation of a rat rod. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Hey, Kevin. Rich Hi. Dwyer. Rich, hey, good to meet yeah. you. Good to meet you too. Good to meet you too. I heard you reference this as a rat rod. Well, I wasn't quite sure where it fit in the big <laughs> scheme of things. Now nah, there's a couple of rat rods out back, but no, this is this is actually a, a truck with over a million miles on it. And you know, we originated the million mile warranty. So we were real interested in this vehicle. It's fully documented that it does have over a million miles on it. Man, I wish I could get a million miles out of my it's vehicle. Amazing, and it's not been taken apart or anything. The heads have never been removed or anything on it, so. Well, I can see by all the dents, you got yep. uh, some debris under the bottom. I mean, exactly. this thing has been through a war and back. He's probably, as we understand it, he cleaned the filter somewhere around 12, 14 times, something of that nature. Number of filters over a million miles, what's that gotta cost you? Oh boy, well, you know, I'd say somewhere around 1800 bucks probably in filters, bucks. something like so that. So he got his money's worth? He did, he did. And uh, this vehicle is really an important vehicle to Canon because it really exemplifies our commitment to the consumer. And it also led us into a new warranty program where the originator of it also, the Consumer Protection Pledge, which is uh, something that we hold near and dear to our heart. So what does this pledge mean? Do we just put up our hand and start saying a pledge out loud? Exactly, or? yeah. <laughs> Actually, what it is is if you, we pledge that if you buy a k and product and if during the use of that product, if you have your vehicle at a dealership and they blame a, a problem on your vehicle was caused because of using our product, that we'll jump in, we'll contact the dealership, we'll try to get them to stand behind and honor the warranty, and if they don't, we make the consumer whole and then we take up the battle with the repair shop or the dealership. Cool. So it's, it's us standing up for the, the little guy, you know, it's one of those kind of a reversal where we're a big company, but we support the little guy as opposed to the, the little guy being abused by big companies. And we're real proud of that. We have a huge commitment to our consumer. They've kept us in business for 42 years. So, so not only do you throw great car shows, you got our backs. That we do, that we do. On all the car shows I've been to, I've never seen one of these. This is a Toyota 1965 Sports 800. Now the owner actually got this shipped from Japan. It's got a two-cylinder engine. Imagine that, only 800 cc's. It's got these little baffles in here that you can pull a cord from the inside on a cold day, close off the radiator so the engine runs a little bit better. It's got an aluminum hood, aluminum top. It's only 45 horsepower but at 1,100 pounds, I bet it's pretty fun. And guess what? All you hybrid owners, it's 50 miles a gallon. All right, Aaron gets the award for the Mean and Nasty Award. He came rumbling in this morning. We gotta fire it up. So he's inside. I got a little gasoline here. He's gonna open the throttles. I'm gonna give it a little one, two, three squirt. He's gonna close them. He's gonna fire it up. That's 545 cubic inches of big block poured alcohol injected. Voila. I think before I head back from California and see what Brian's doing, I'm gonna have to pour me a cold one, sit back and relax. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. What causes a low coolant level? A low coolant level is a sure sign you have a cooling system leak. Leaks can come from many places, like the radiator, heater core, freeze plugs, hoses, or intake gaskets. Many hose leaks can be taken care of with a simple tightening of the clamp. A common sign of a heater core leak is a sweet smell inside the car. Check the radiator cap to make sure it's not overpressurizing the cooling system. Also, when inspecting the core, check for rock damage and look inside the radiator, because old cooling can start to corrode and eat through the metal causing the radiator to leak over time. If you have a coolant leak, permanently fix it with Bars Leaks Block Seal Liquid Copper Intake and Radiator Stop Leak. You don't even need to drain the coolant. Just pour in one bottle, and in 15 to 20 minutes, the leak is sealed. This tip is brought to you by Bars Leaks, affordable solutions to expensive automotive repairs. 
Welcome to the break room. Well, Bird's a little late. I'm sure he'll... Oh, there you go. Hey! And I brought gifts. Thank you very much. Great car show out in California. I love Got Christmas. Got some goodies for our next project. But in the meantime... Current project. So first thing up here in the break room is from American Auto Wire. This is their classic update series. Yeah, this is for the 64 to 67 GOAT, the GTO, Le Mans, the Tempest. And a uh, great thing about American Auto Wire is they're built specifically for a car. The wires are to length. They got all the clips you need. It's gonna go direct into your vehicle. Uh, you've got your updated ignition modules, your dimmer switches, your headlights. Yeah, this is their classic update kit. So everything you need, just to plug and play. Makes it simple, everything's labeled. You always know where you are in the system. It's a piece of cake. And especially, it makes it fast. Yeah. Getting this from American Auto Wire. Hey, next up from LMC Truck, it's their door inner panel kits. Now this one fits the 81 to 87 Suburban Truck Blazer. It's all your GMC and Chevy stuff. It's mm -hmm. a complete kit. They've got all the colors just to match your current interior. They're all made from new tooling, so they're going to fit nice and last a long time. Yeah, UV resistant. And if you go to LMC Truck, get a free catalog. They have all kinds of parts. For all kinds of trucks, oh, Ford, yeah. Dodge, you know, GMC products, yeah, Chevy yeah. products. Yeah, now your Ford and Chevys are from the late 40s and up, and your Dodges from 1994. They got all kinds of stuff. Get your free catalog at LMC Truck. A lot of you got to see us go behind the scenes with Green Earth Technologies, see how they formulate, how they blend, how they go test their oils, put them on the racetrack. It's their G oil. And this is amazing synthetic oil. It's actually it's just as much performance as a normal oil. It's green oil, it's made in America, which is nice. It's made from plant oil, so it's bio-based. Yeah, low toxicity, so it gives you the performance. Use it for the maximum oil change interval by your manufacturer. I mean, it's a really safe, zero toxicity, best biodegradability you can get. Feels so, good. It's a great way to get performance, yep. feel good. That's right. Get the job done. G oil from Green Earth Technologies. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the show today. It was fun seeing you go out to K&N. That was cool. It's fun for me to see me too. <laughs> so I'll go out to K&N. So we're out of time. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.